Hello and welcome to the beginner tutorial for Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. That's a pretty long game title, so most of the players call the game Super Turbo, or ST for short. I'm David Serlin, the lead producer from Backbone Entertainment and Digital Eclipse on Capcom Classics Collection Volume 2. I'm also an accomplished tournament player in Super Turbo, and I help run the Evolution Fighting Game Championships, the largest fighting game series in the United States. So, what do you need to know to play Super Turbo? The game is mostly about controlling space on the 2D playfield and pressing an advantage when you get into a good situation. We'll start with talking about the basics. There's normal moves, special moves, and super moves. We'll also cover the importance of throws and throw escapes, or throw softens as they're also known. And finally, I'll tell you how to pick some of the secret characters. There's actually 17 secret characters in this game, and I'll show you how to pick the best two. Controlling Space Street Fighter 2 has a 2D playfield with no sidestepping, so controlling space in the playfield really limits the opponent's ability to move and attack. They've got to figure out a way to get around fireballs, for example. Let's look at the game with some rectangles overlaid to see which space is being controlled. This large horizontal rectangle represents the amount of space Ryu controls with his fireball. Look at how much of the playfield it takes up. The opponent's going to have to figure out some way to get around that. This other vertical slanted rectangle represents the space that Ryu controls with his Dragon Punch. So if you jump over one of his fireballs at the wrong time, he'll be able to Dragon Punch you out of the air. This is his basic gameplay, and you can see that it's so effective because so much of the playfield is under Ryu's control. Now let's compare this to Bison's ability to control space. His Scissor Kicks and Psycho Crusher let him control a lot of the horizontal playfield, just like Ryu. You can see how his horizontal rectangle takes up the whole screen. But the difference is that these two moves, both the Scissor Kick and the Psycho Crusher, will lose to fireballs. That means that when Ryu throws a fireball, the space that Bison controls shrinks and shrinks and shrinks. Bison's got to find another way around those fireballs. Also, remember that Ryu had that big vertical slanted rectangle which represented his Dragon Punch. Bison is lacking that. And that's one of his weaknesses. If an opponent jumps in on him, he could try to do a stand fierce punch, but it has a pretty small hitbox and is not as high priority as a dragon punch. His other option would be to do a jumping strong punch, which is probably a better option, but still it's not as good as a dragon punch. Bison has to make up for these weaknesses with other advantages. Chun-Li can control a lot of space as well. She can throw a slow fireball, which takes up the entire bottom of the screen. And while it's traveling, she can do a jumping short kick, which takes up almost the entire top of the screen. In the example here, you can see that she ends with a standing fierce punch to further limit the options of the enemy. So during the sequence of slow fireball, jump short, stand fierce, Chun-Li controls almost the entire playfield. Now let's look at Zangief. This rectangle over Zangief represents the range of his spinning pile driver throw, also known as his SPD. That's one of his main moves and one of the best throws in the game. If you can get close enough so that your rectangle overlaps the opponent, then you can do the spinning pile drive. So that's what you should be thinking about when you play Zangief. Try to get that rectangle, which represents the range of the spinning pile drive, to overlap the enemy. This other rectangle represents the range of his low roundhouse. That low roundhouse is very fast and very high priority, so the enemy will be afraid of it. If you can get close enough to threaten with that low roundhouse, which isn't very hard, then they're probably going to be afraid and block. And you can use that moment, that moment when they're just a little bit afraid and blocking, to inch forward so you can get the pile drive. Now let's look at Vega. Vega's attacks are pretty long range because he has a claw. You can see that his rectangles extend almost half the screen even with his normal moves. But he can really control space when he starts going off the wall. He can either go off the back wall first or the opposite wall first. And either way he can advance while avoiding ground attacks and he can really control space. Move types. Just so we get the terminology straight, let's go over the different types of moves in Street Fighter. There's normal moves, special moves, super moves, and throws and holds. To perform a normal move, just press any of the six buttons, jab, strong, fierce, short, forward, or roundhouse. 
You can also jump or crouch and hit a button to get a different jumping or crouching normal move. Special moves require a combination of joystick movement and button press, such as Ryu's fireball. To throw a fireball, move the joystick in a quarter circle motion, going from down to down forward to forward, and then press a punch button. Dalsim can also throw a fireball using that exact same command, but he's got a different move, the Yoga Flame, with a slightly different command. That's a half circle towards plus punch. So you move the joystick back, down back, down, down forward, forward, and then press a punch button. Guile Sonic Boom has an even different motion. You've got to hold the joystick in one of the back positions, such as straight back or diagonally down and back. You hold it there for about one second, and then you go towards and press a punch button. Special moves usually have strong properties that normal moves don't. For example, Dragon Punches, Honda's Headbutt, and Balrog's Buffalo Headbutt are all invulnerable when they start. Projectiles like Ken and Ryu's Fireballs, Guile Sonic Boom, or Sagat's Tiger Shots aren't invulnerable, but they do control a lot of space. Other moves such as Honda's Flying Butt, Baylong's Flying Kicks, or Vega's Wall Dive allow you to move forward while avoiding ground attacks. Most special moves do block damage also. That means that even if the opponent successfully blocks, he'll still take a little bit of damage. Super moves are even more powerful moves with even better invulnerability. Each character has only one super move in this game, and it can only be performed when the super meter is full. Super moves usually require you to input the motion of a special move two times very quickly and then press a button. For example, Ryu's Super Fireball is performed by doing two quarter circle motions with a joystick. In other words, you move the stick from down to down forward, forward, then down again, down forward, forward, and then press punch. You'll have to do the motion very quickly. Super moves can really change the match, not only because they allow for big damage comebacks, but also because they let your character overcome some of his weaknesses. Here you can see Ryu throwing a lot of fireballs against Sagat, and it's a very difficult fight for Ryu. But once he gets his supercharged, he's able to throw a super fireball through Sagat's fireballs. Here you can see Balrog having a tough time against Sagat's fireballs as well. He has to use his buffalo headbutt to maneuver around them, or jump in, but that can be deadly too. But once he gets his supercharged, he can use his super to go through fireballs even from all the way across the screen. Here we see Bison fighting against Zangief. Bison doesn't have any invulnerable moves except for a super, so if Zangief uses his jump fierce splash over and over against Bison in the corner, it can actually be pretty difficult to get out of. If Bison has his supercharged, he can use it to hit the splash. It won't do much damage, but it is the high priority move he needs to get out of the situation. Throws To throw the opponent, hold the joystick towards or away and then press fierce punch. Some characters can also throw with the strong, forward, or roundhouse buttons. Let's get this straight, throws are really good in ST. They have pretty good range, they do good damage, and they can be very hard to avoid sometimes, even when you know they're coming. The good news is that you can soften a throw to reduce the damage you would take by half. To soften a throw, you must execute your own throw within 13 frames of you getting thrown. That means that within 13 sixtieths of a second, after you get thrown, you must hold left or right on the joystick or D-pad, and then press strong, fierce, forward, or roundhouse. There's a couple of things you can't soften. You can't soften the damage from special throws, such as Zangief's Pile Drive or T-Hawk's Cyclone, or Vega's Off the Wall Throw. You also cannot soften holds, such as Dulcim's Noogie or Blanca's Bite. You can wiggle the joystick and press the buttons rapidly to get out of these holds quicker, though. Before I move on, I just want to emphasize again that throws are a very big part of this game, because they can be so hard to get out of. Let's look at these really dangerous examples. Here you can see Zangief doing stand short into his spinning pile drive. And here you can see Balrog doing his headbutt over and over to Bison. These are both very difficult situations to get out of. Picking secret characters. At first glance, there are 16 characters in Super Turbo, but each of these characters has an alternate version. These alternate versions are from Super Street Fighter 2, the version just before Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. They are usually referred to as the super versions of the characters or the old versions. 
The old characters don't have super meters, so they can't perform super moves. They also cannot soften throws when they get thrown, which means they will always take full damage from throws. In exchange for these drawbacks, the old characters have minor advantages such as slightly faster movement or moves. Most old characters aren't worth bothering with, though. The best old character, and one of the best characters in the entire game, is Old Saget. Another honorable mention is Old Ken. To pick Old Saget, move the character selection box to Saget, then press the jab button. Immediately after that, input the command up, down, down, up on the joystick, then press jab again. If you forget that code, you can just violently wiggle the stick up and down a lot and then press jab, and that should work too. You'll hear Tiger if you did it right. To pick old Ken, move the character selection box to Ken, then press the jab button. Immediately after that, input left, 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 right on the joystick, and then press jab again. Again, you can just wiggle the stick left and right quickly if you forget the code, and then press jab, and that'll work too. Also, if you press jab and short at the same time at the end of the code instead of just jab, you'll get a very slightly different color costume. For example, Ken's gi will be slightly pink instead of red. In addition to the 16 regular characters and the 16 old characters, there is one more character, one of the most deadly characters in all of fighting games. He's called Akuma. I'll show you how to pick him, but he's banned in all tournaments in the United States, so there's not much point in practicing him. But anyway, if you want to play him, here's how to pick him. First, move the character selection box to Ryu, and then wait 3 seconds. Then move the box to T-Hawk, and wait another 3 seconds. Then to Guile, and wait. Then to Kami, wait another 3 seconds. And then move it back to Ryu. 3 seconds after that, press all 3 punch buttons and start at the same time. And you should probably mash all 3 punch buttons and start many times quickly because if you miss it the first time you still have a half second to input those commands. Okay, that's it for the beginner section of the tutorial. This is the intermediate tutorial for Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. And in this tutorial we'll cover two at ones, the definition of combo, cross-ups, pressing the advantage, meaty attacks, which are also called early attacks, and reversals. Two-in-ones. Two-in-one is a term that means canceling a normal attack into a special attack. Some normal attacks have this property, such as Ryu's low roundhouse, while other normal attacks don't, such as Guile's low forward. That means that Guile can't cancel his low forward into a sonic boom, but he can cancel his stand fierce into a sonic boom, or even into a flash kick if you're good. There isn't really much of a trick to doing a two-in-one. You just do the normal move, and then immediately after it hits, or is blocked, you do the special move. Definition of combo. A combo is a series of hits such that if the first hit connects, then the opponent will not be able to block or avoid the rest of the hits. Exploring which combos are possible can be fun, and performing combos lets you do a lot more damage when you have an opening. Here's a few simple combos. And here's some much more difficult combos. Cross-ups. A cross-up is a general term for a jumping attack that puts you just barely on the other side of the opponent. Cross-ups are most effective to do against opponents who are getting up from a knockdown, and they can be really difficult to block. Depending on how deep your cross-up attack is, the opponent might have to block by holding left, or he might have to block by holding right. Cross-ups also give you a good opportunity to do combos. If you hit an opponent with a deep cross-up, you're close enough to combo into other moves. Some characters can set up for a cross-up pretty easily. Here you can see Ryu doing a low roundhouse to knock his opponent down, and then he cancels or two and ones that low roundhouse into a short helicopter kick. This puts him at the perfect range to go for a cross-up attack as the enemy gets up. After Bison throws his opponent, he's just at the right distance to go for a cross-up. He can either use the jump roundhouse or jump forward kick to mix up which way the opponent has to block. And as you can see, if he lands that cross-up, he can do a deadly combo. Vega's wall dive can also be very difficult to block if done correctly. If you get hit by it, you get knocked down, 
and that gives Vega enough time to do another off-the-wall attack and go for another cross-up. Cross-up attacks are like gambling, but in your favor. The chances of you getting hit when you attempt a cross-up are usually pretty low, but if you land a cross-up, you can do big damage. That's high reward for little risk. Pressing the advantage. Pressing the advantage is a general concept in any strategy game, but I want to show some specific situations in Super Turbo that illustrate the advantageous situations. Here's Ryu versus Honda. Now, Ryu is at the perfect distance to throw fireballs over and over at Honda, so that if Honda even tries to jump over them, Ryu can just do a sweep and knock Honda down, and then Honda's right back into that fireball pattern. If you can get into this situation, you need to stay in it and ride it to victory. We've already covered cross-ups, but I want to mention them again as an example of pressing an advantage. Although you're probably better off throwing fireballs at a knockdown Honda to keep him away, as we've just seen, against most characters, you're going to be better pressing the advantage on that knockdown by going for a cross-up. Also, press the advantage on throws when you have it. Here we see Honda, who has Bison knocked down and in the corner. Now, Honda can do his low jab into Ochio throw over and over again, and it's almost impossible for Bison to get out. If he doesn't have a super, the only way he can get out is to do a reversal throw. That's very, very difficult. If you can get into this situation, you should ride it all the way to victory. Don't worry about being cheap or honorable. Just do what's necessary to win, and you'll keep improving. Meaty attacks. Meaty attacks are also known as early attacks, and they're kind of strangely named, but I'll tell you what they mean. A meaty attack is when you time your attack a little early against an opponent who's getting up from a knockdown. This way, the tail end of your attack hits, and you'll be able to recover from your attack just a few frames after the hit so you can perform another attack. So here's an example. If you pick Bison and do Bison's low medium kick, and then try to do his stand roundhouse kick, you're not going to be able to combo that no matter how hard you try. But if you knock down the opponent and you do a meaty low forward kick, so just the tail end of that kick hits, then you do have time to combo the stand roundhouse. And it's actually not even that difficult. Another example is can slow fireball. Note that if you throw a series of slow fireballs, as you can see here, at an opponent at mid-range, he can jump out of these fireballs pretty easily. But if you throw a meaty slow fireball against a rising opponent, so just the tail end of that fireball hits the opponent as he gets up, then you're able to throw a second slow fireball right away, and the opponent is not able to jump between these fireballs. Reversals. If someone is going to do a meaty attack against you, you need to do a reversal to get out of trouble. A reversal is a move that either hits or becomes invulnerable on the very first frame that it comes out. Example reversal attacks are Ken and Ryu's Dragon Punch, DJ's up kick, Honda's jab headbutt, and Vega's flip kick. If you perform a special or super move on the very first frame after you get up from a knockdown, the game shows you a reversal message and gives you 1,000 points. The fireball is not invulnerable at the start like the dragon punch, so if you get up into an enemy attack and do a reversal fireball, that's not going to do any good, but you will still get the message. Also note that throws can be used as reversal attacks but it can be difficult and it's kind of risky too because you have to be standing to throw unless you're Zangief. If you get up into an enemy attack and throw in the exact frame where you're fully standing, you can throw the enemy. Okay, and that's it for the intermediate section of the tutorial for Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. This is the advanced section for Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Here we'll cover instant overheads, piano inputs, button up reversals, also called negative edge reversals, and safe jumps. Instant overheads. So what's an overhead? That's a ground attack that you have to block high. And there's not many of those in the game. Here's Ryu's. It's a two-hit overhead attack, and you've got to stand up to block it. Now, you can make your own overheads with a few other characters. Like, look at Chun-Li. If she jumps and then immediately does a head stomp, you actually have to block that high, and it's a high enough priority move that it can beat Dragon Punches. Bison's jump forward can also be used in this way. You jump and then do that medium kick right away. It'll hit an opponent that's ducking. Balrog can also do the same thing with his jump medium kick. 
Piano inputs. Getting a reversal attack, such as a dragon punch, right when you get up from a knockdown, can be pretty difficult in Super Turbo. There is only a small window of time to execute reversals. Let's say you're knocked down and you need to do a dragon punch to get out of trouble. If you execute the dragon punch like this, where you press the jab button and hold it down at the end of your motion, you've only got one button input that the game could recognize to do that dragon punch, the jab button down. But if you do it like this, where you press and release the jab button very quickly, you actually have two chances because when the jab button is released, that counts as a special move input. Now, if you release the jab button, you won't do a normal move. Uh, like a, a jab won't come out, but it does allow you to throw a fireball or do an uppercut or any other special move. So what would be even better than that is if you end your dragon punch motion by pressing all three punch buttons in rapid succession and then releasing all three in rapid succession. That's three button down inputs and three button up inputs for a total of six chances to get your dragon punch to come out. And because you have to roll your fingers across the buttons quickly to do that, some players refer to it as the piano method. Using this piano method, you won't be exactly sure which dragon punch will come out, either the jab, strong, or fierce version. The chances are you don't really care. You just want some version to come out, and your chances of that go way, way up if you use this. I should note for some characters, it doesn't even matter which version you do. Like, if Cammy does her dragon punch with kick move, and that move is blocked, she actually has the same recovery no matter which version of the move is used. So you should definitely use the piano method on her reversal dragon punch every time. And another note for Zangief, if you use the piano method to do the spinning pile drive move, which means you would roll your fingers across all three punch buttons, you might accidentally get a lariat. So it's better to roll your finger across just two punch buttons because two punch buttons will not activate a lariat in the arcade version of Super Street Fighter II Turbo. Button up reversals, also called negative edge reversals. As mentioned in the last section, you can do a special move by releasing a button or by pressing it. And remember that normal moves will only come out when you press the button and not release it. You can use this to your advantage when you're trying to do reversals, or even in other situations. It's most useful for Fei Long and Honda, but it can be used by other characters like T-Hawk as well. Fei Long is a special case because his version of the Dragon Punch, the Flame Kick, ends with the joystick in defensive crouch. Usually, you'll get a low short kick if you mess up the motion. But, if you do the joystick motion, and then you release the short kick button, rather than pressing it, you'll either get a flame kick if you timed it right, or you'll just be safely blocking if you mistimed it. This allows you to go for a reversal flame kick without really risking anything. You'll just block if you mess up. Now, Honda's throw has a very weird property. You're actually able to store this throw. The Ochio throw motion is forward, down forward, down, down back, and then press a punch button. But you can actually hold the joystick and down back for as long as you want, and then press the punch button later. Here's an example where Honda has the opponent knocked down, and he wants to do low jab into Ochio throw. So first of all, after the first low jab Ochio throw, he can do another low jab, and then he can release the punch button to execute the Ochio throw rather than press it. Now the opponent might be able to do a reversal attack against the low jab, but against the Ochio throw, if it doesn't come out for some reason, Honda will just be blocking and he didn't risk anything by going for it. Here's another example of the button up technique with T-Hawk versus Ryu. Here T-Hawk does low jab, low jab, and he holds the jab button down the second time. Then he does the 360 motion, or spinning pile drive motion. For him, the move is called the cyclone, though. And at this point, Ryu might do a dragon punch. If he does do a dragon punch, when T-Hawk releases the jab button, he just won't get the cyclone move, and he'll be safe and he'll be able to block. But if Ryu does not do a dragon punch, when T-Hawk releases the button after that 360 motion, he'll get the cyclone. So it's a win-win. It's a safe way to attempt to do the cyclone. Safe jumps. Let's say you have your opponent knocked down, and your opponent is really good at doing reversal attacks when he gets up, like a reversal dragon punch with Ryu. Even in this situation, it's still possible to attempt a jumping attack. 
It's strange, I know. But the key is that reversal attacks don't usually hit on the very first frame. Ryu's Dragon Punch, for example, is invulnerable at the very beginning for four frames, but it can't actually hit until the fifth frame, or fifth sixtieth of a second. That means that if you time your jump in really late, and just as Ryu gets up, you do your attack, it's possible to time it so that your attack only intersects Ryu during those very first four frames of his Dragon Punch, and those first four frames can't hit you. This is difficult to time, but if you do it right, here's what happens. If your opponent does do the Dragon Punch, your move will not hit him, because he's invulnerable, but he won't hit you either, because by the time Ryu got to the fifth frame, the frame that can actually hit on his Dragon Punch, you will have already landed, and you'll be able to block safely. If Ryu decides not to do a reversal Dragon Punch, then he'll have to block your attack. This is especially useful if you want to throw the opponent with Honda's Ocho Throw, or Zangief's Spinning Pile Drive, or Ken's Knee Bash. Using this technique lets you actually jump in safely against many characters, force them to block, and then go for a throw. So for throw characters, this can really turn the tables in a match. Watch this safe jump setup for Ken. and this other safe jump setup with Ken. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial series. Again, I'm David Serlin, lead producer from Backbone Entertainment and Digital Eclipse. And on behalf of the entire team and Capcom, we thank you for playing.